Welcome to GradCast, the official podcast of the Society of Graduate Students at the University of Western Ontario. Welcome to another exciting episode of GradCast, the official podcast of of graduate students at the University of Western Ontario. I am Tristan Johnson. I'm here today with Ramina Adam. Hello, everyone. And we have an excellent guest today. We're from the Hispanic Literature area. He's doing a PhD. He's a very involved person. I believe you also work in PSAC, and you are... I call it PCAC. Yeah, <laughs> PCAC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> His name is Jaime Re uh, Brenes Reyes, and... Uh, very good, yeah. Lovely. Welcome to GradCast. Thank you. We tried to have you on a bit earlier, but, you know, complications got in the way, but welcome. You made it. <laughs> How are you? Finally. Today? I'm okay, you know. It's uh, end of March, so it's a, it's a, it's a BBC. You know, so I'm uh, exams on uh, SSC grade. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, that's uh, the same for everyone. Celebrating with a beer at Grad Club? <laughs> well, right now, you know, no one gave me a beer, you know, so, you know. <laughs> oh, we, we, can, we can wait for later. After, after Grad Club. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very professional yeah. in that regard. All right. So, Jaime, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. What you do in these hallowed halls. Well, I enjoy uh, reading. Um, I think uh, reading uh, good literature can be uh, sometimes a bit... Uh, Therapeutic uh, so, somehow, and also very engaging in a way that uh, takes me out of my uh, or push my, my limits of what I understand by by reality. So uh, when uh, when uh, when I read uh, uh, a good text, I know that it's good because at the end I'm like, what the hell do I just read? Uh, what do I make out of this? So when when, when I don't know what what this has, what something meant in the text is when uh, it, it, it gives me the signal that I actually read something good. That's what, that's, what, that's what I try to do. So you're like trying to catch that. Like I mean, it's, it's not just like in literature, but like lots of things where like you get a really good story or something like that, and afterwards you just have that feeling like, like how does my life even continue after this? Like, <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. You know, yeah, and not that I want to end my life, but uh, how do I see my life after reading this uh, particularly very excellent piece of literature? Mm -hmm. Or uh, how that may change uh, what I have already experienced before reading it. So that's a really interesting thing to to uh because like the qualia like the, there's not really a word for the emotion right there, there, there might be uh in, 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 uh, that, that emotion uh i, I will uh, the, the way that i put it in, in my research i call it a uh, uh, a seizure seizure a seizure yeah yeah so uh, seizure you know in the english language can mean many things it can be an assault it can be a possession it can be a, a kidnapping uh it can be uh, some kind of interruption so uh, I see that um, that emotion, if if you want to call it an, an emotional thing, or even an uh, affect, in which uh, the uh, there is a, a, a so, so, something that happens in between, almost like an earthquake. I don't know if you have ever you know uh, been or felt an earthquake, but you know there is uh, that moment that you know that they might in, that according to the to the to the clock might last one second, but then according to your own emotions or the way that you feel it, it might last a, a century if you uh, you know if you really get into it. So you're taking the word seizure out of like the typical scientific aspect of it, which is like that, you know, increase in neural activity, well, abnormal neural mm -hmm. activity, and you're kind of redefining it in like a kind of in terms of literature, right? Exactly. Yeah. So in the in the humanities right now, there is a, a field emerging which uh, we uh, some people call uh, health humanities. Okay. Uh, so there there are some uh, in fact some uh, physicians that are trying to engage uh, with literature and explaining the, the works of, uh, let's say, uh, famous authors like Dostoevsky. Mm -hmm. And uh, they try to explain it by, uh, by using, uh, we, we know, well, for example, you know, the, we know that Dostoevsky was, was epileptic. Right. So some physicians uh, go and, and, uh, and read these books and try to explain it, being like, oh, okay, so Dostoevsky was epileptic, so he was, really, uh, he was uh, writing uh, this way. Uh, I, I recognize and I acknowledge that reading, but uh, I, I take some things uh, out of science and use them uh, rather as, uh, as metaphors for my own reading. Mm -hmm. So what, what I want is not exactly to explain uh, a good text, because uh, I, I, will th I, I think that, that when you want to explain a good text, then it's not as interesting. The, the, the question or, or the doubt, the seizure moment, has to remain there. Uh, so I, I use it as a more of, more of a uh, me metaphor uh, uh, method, let's say, in which uh, you know, uh, and then for, for the, uh, from that from that point to bring questions back to science, 
uh, not not to uh, not to bring science into the threat to the planet, but try to ra uh, raise questions uh, to uh, may, may pose some kind of challenge or some some kind of debate with with scientists. Very interesting. So Dostoevsky, so he's a, for those of you who don't know, a Russian author. Mm -hmm. He's author of Crime and Punishment, The Idiot. Um, so he had epilepsy, as you said. Yeah. And so I guess, is he like a common person that these people who are doing health humanities research, that they really look into? Well, he's, uh, he's, he's one of the, uh, of the uh, main ones, I will say. Right. Because uh, he's very well recognized in literature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're looking into, who's the author that you're currently looking into? Uh, like, so. Mainly uh, Julio Cortaza. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a bit about him? Uh, Julio Cortaza, he was uh, he was born in, in Belgium in uh, 1914, just at the beginning of the uh, the, the First World War. Then uh, he uh, he uh, he grew up a couple of years in France, uh, then in uh, Spain. Then uh, he moved with his family to Argentina, and then uh, he uh, he he started to, to uh, just to be a teacher in uh, you know primary or high school. He was he, he was uh, doing some writing in his uh, 30s and, uh, and 40s, but uh, he was a bit of a shy uh, shy person. He was he was, uh, he was extremely extremely tall. He was almost like two, two meters tall. Uh, you, you see a picture of uh, this guy. It was like oh my god! Look, uh, you, you see the big difference, you know, in the, the, in the pictures. But uh, but but then uh, by the uh, end of the uh, the 50s, uh, almost a little, almost like a middle of the 50s actually, he decided to move to France. And uh, he he lived uh, the the, uh, the rest of his life in France. Uh, the the political situation in Argentina at the time was was uh, was a bit difficult. There was uh, some dictatorship. Uh, then uh, later on in, in the 70s uh, there was a military dictatorship. You know there was a, there was a coup. Uh, but then uh, he, even in his own words uh, he felt more of a Latin American in France rather than Argentina. Uh, and uh, he he wrote a, a very famous novel uh, in the in Latin American literature. It was, uh, it's translated into English as uh, hopscotch. But he was uh, mainly uh, a short story writer. Okay. And what got you interested in? Like, what exactly are you doing with his his literature? What are you looking at? Well, his uh, his literature, uh, his uh, his uh, short stories. There's always a point in which I, I feel I feel that. What just happened here? Uh, because there are these uh, these moments in which you don't know exactly who is talking, who is doing the, the narration, or what the, the, the setting might, might, might be. Uh, things change very very quickly. A very very uh, uh, how you say it? Uh, like you you don't even even realize that, that, that there is a change very smoothly. Right. Yeah. Sorry, you know English is my second language. Okay. Uh, I was, about, I was, uh, yeah, yeah, I was about to talk in Spanish, you know, in Espanol. Translated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but then, uh, when, it, when it was uh, diagnosed with a, with a seizure disorder, I came across uh, this uh, very interesting essay that, that he brought. More of an essay, it was a, a reflection of uh, how he writes, or he comes to write a short story. So he explains that uh, well, you know, he, he used to be a translator for the UNESCO in, in, in Paris. So he 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 will be like uh, maybe I'm, I'm translating something from French into Spanish, but then I I, I feel this uh, this thing you know coming into me into my into my mind, taking over me. the mm -hmm. sort of a possession uh, that he he felt the idea coming upon him. And then he will have to stop doing what, whatever he was doing, and just sit down with his uh, typewriter and tap out, uh, tap out the, the, the story. Uh, so then, because of my my, my seizure disorder has much much to do with language, I felt some kind of uh, of connection. Uh, you know that, that that moment in in which I have to stop whatever I'm doing. Uh, and uh, again, you know, this is something that that goes back to uh, Dostoevsky. That that's why he's uh, he's very uh, interesting. That. Uh, as a, someone, someone with a, with, with a seizure, you know, anyone with a seizure will, will tell you, it's not something that, that we want to have one, we, we avoid having one, um, that's why we take medication, you know, first of all. But at the same time, there's something to gain in a very strange way out of them. That uh, being taken away from reality for a second might, you know, give you some uh, momentum, or almost, into looking at, at the world in a, in a different way. 
so when, 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 uh, when I read this, uh, this reflection by, by Cortázar and how he comes to write that story uh, because uh, he feels this uh, thing coming up on him and then he has to, uh, he has to uh, sit down and write and he goes as far as to call these, uh, these ideas almost like demos uh, that, he, that when he writes a, a good short story he's doing ex ex uh, exorcism because uh, but the interesting thing is that he's trying to kill that emotion by giving life to a story. Uh, Beautiful. Then that, that's the way I, I try to see my, my research. That uh, you know, yeah, we know we are all you know, uh, you know, graduate students. We, we know that it's not easy to do research, but then we, there is some kind of passion by which we know we want to do it, but the only way to finish it is to actually do it. Uh, so there is uh, some kind of uh, you know something pushing pushing you you know towards those limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that that's what got me interested in, in, in Cortázar. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really interesting. Uh, what's really interesting about that is uh, both uh, your author and you talking about how it felt like almost as if creativity or the inspiration of the story came mm -hmm. from without, and that's actually a really common thing. Like if you look like look back at like things like the muses, like the concept, and like yeah. and the creativity comes from them. So how does this idea of like the seizure as in like, or the seizure as in like mm -hmm. being, like your life feeling interrupted by just being taken away by an amazing story that you've read, as opposed to like this idea of the story coming to you yeah. and you have to write it. Like, yeah. how, do, how do you um, reconcile those two uh, states. Well, you know, I, I, as, as I say, I, I try to bring, um, or I try to do my uh, neuroscience uh, readings. I might, I, might, I might be misinformed, but you know, I try to do as much as I can. <laughs> uh, seizures, at least, in, in, you know, there, there are many types of seizures. Uh, in, in my case, uh, they happen. So, you know, a, a neuroscientist, Romina? Yeah, I'm a graduate student. I would love to call myself a neuroscientist, okay, okay. but not just yet. Okay. Yeah. But you know, there, there's uh, the, the the theta waves, right? right. Yeah. So that's where my seizures happen. Mm -hmm. So theta waves is uh, daydreaming. Right. So daydreaming, uh, do you do you um, do you decide where to daydream? I will say no, especially when when reading a text. If if you if you get really engaged with the text, there is a this a certain point in which uh, in which you lose uh, that grasp, well of 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 uh, you know the the way that we perceive the world normally. So that, that may alter even the, the, the function of the brain. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, in writing and reading, there is a, a, a generation of that daydreaming state, which is also what the neuroscientists uh, see as the, uh, the, the, the primary role of these uh, theta waves. Not, not only of daydreaming, it's how it, it happens when, 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 when you have dreamings, uh, when you have dreams, but also uh, the, uh, it's a focus of creativity. It's amazing. Like, there's always so many thoughts that yeah. creativity is something you work hard and work at, but it's actually oh, no, no. like the idea that sometimes it just comes. Yeah, that's it's really fascinating. Um, so another thing that's really cool about your work is that there's like you're always uh, in the humanities participating in a conversation. You know, which right? Yeah. You're, 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 you know, you, every book is responding to books mm. and is trying to say something, responding. And so, like, is there other people working in this idea of seizure, or is this like your baby? <laughs> uh, there, there are some people. Uh, I have convinced them into. <laughs> no, no, I should, I should not take credit for it. Uh, no, it has come from uh, from many sources. Uh, but uh, I would like to see it as a, as the the thing that I'm bringing um, in, into into the field. Especially, you know, as I, uh, I mentioned before, health, uh, health humanities. But uh, the, 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 the focus of, uh, uh, of at least a literary uh, theory in terms of, uh, let's say, um, um, in neuroscience or health, uh, or health humanities have been English uh, literature, you know, mostly, uh, mostly American, and uh, in some cases of Dostoevsky. Mm -hmm. So, but in terms of Latin American, there's uh, Latin American literature, nothing I've seen. So you're really going to be a pioneer? I hope, yeah. yeah. That's very good. So what do you think, what would you say that the implications of your research would be then? Um, that's a good question. What can it tell you? Yeah. <laughs> the implications are, I would like to... Uh, do you think it's like a way to kind of bring like a human side to, you know, people with epilepsy? And, and <laughs> yeah. Taking you away from just 
calling it like a neurological disorder to me. You're kind of yeah, exactly. you're, yep. you're looking yep. at it from a different for, mm -hmm. from a different angle. Like you know, it has its benefits and it can really get you super engaged into reading this awesome literature in like a different way. And so yeah, yeah, that, 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 that was the angle that uh, um, I was. Uh, it was uh, taking me some time. That, 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 that's exactly what I tried to do. Uh, so, the, the, the implication I, I will say is that uh, my experience with the healthcare in North America has been well. It could, it could, it could be much better. Mm -hmm. the, the way that healthcare is uh, perceived in North America is that it is there for the treatment of people with with illnesses. And I don't think that 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 exactly what healthcare should be. Healthcare should be there for the betterment of well people. Not only of, of people with, uh, with with some kind of uh, disability or some kind of illnesses or some kind of something, healthcare should should, should be there for the uh, for everyone for the benefit of everyone. Even if you don't have a uh, you know some some kind of seizure disorder, you can get you can get much from you know the, the reading about other people's uh, narrative or, or or perception about it. So when we talk about health or healing or uh, you know whatever we want to we want to call it. It's, it's not. It's not just to treat, you know, and who's the who's the next uh, who's the, who's the next person in the line, you know, to uh, for me to see uh, an appointment today as a, as a doctor. It should be for for everyone. Very interesting. Yeah, so where does the connection come then between seizure as like this new definition for this experiential mm -hmm. moment and seizure as in you know the medical um, when you know the the, the, the firings the you know, shaking and the yeah, yeah, yeah. on the floor thing. Like, uh, like I mean, they come in all sorts of uh, shapes and sizes. But I'm just wondering, like, where do you see that connection between uh, seizure as experiential mm -hmm. uh, event and seizure as like medical episode? Yeah, uh, I, I, I see it as a say as, as the moment, the uh, the moment in which you are in between. So uh, a seizure doesn't really have to be uh, some kind of a tonic clonic in which you know that you, you, you lose control of your body. There can be many, many types of, of, of seizures. Um, you might be having one and you have, you have no idea. Uh, or I might, have, I, 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 I might be having one and you have no idea. And uh, someone just be, before the show was mentioning the uh, uh, conference that we recently uh, did in my department that, calls, uh, that we, we call the trans and trans. So being in that trans state can also be uh, a seizure. So it doesn't doesn't have to have a in let's say um, a bad meaning. It could be a, a bringing oneself in connection with other, with other people. So you know when, when you're when, when you're dancing, when you are so so intensely dancing as in a rave, or so intensely meditating as in yoga. Well, why don't we call that a seizure too? Because uh, there is an interruption. There there is an alteration of the way that we're perceiving reality. So you know this are, this are, I think it's a word that have. A lot of potential to, to bring something new into uh, people's life. Oh, thanks. I think so. That sounds like you're adding to the lexicon right there. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a really interesting way to think about seizures, like in a just completely redefining it. And I think that's that's very interesting. Um, how would you say? So, do you think that the way when you read literature, have you ever com talked about reading the same work and then talked about with someone who doesn't experience mm -hmm. seizures and and you've seen like a difference in the way that you guys perceive that literature. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see a debate or the sense of ideas or the different perspectives as something bad. Yeah. I, I think we, we are it's very beneficial, you know, to hear the different perspectives. Do you think you experience it on a kind of like a higher level in comparison to other people? Yeah, perhaps. And yeah, I, yeah, that, 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 that's, that, that's also a good question, you know, because uh, I don't want my thesis to be about myself <laughs> or about my experience. Uh, I try to take my ego outside of it uh, and uh, bring it in connection to other people. Right. I think it will be a, a very, a very, a very big mistake of my part if uh, what I'm, what if I'm writing is all, is only my interpretation of these particular texts, because that then there is no interruption. Right. I, I will just, uh, I will just, uh, I will be just building my own ego out of my interpretation. It would be an autobiography. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, it, it is hard because you know I, I do feel the connection, but at the same time, it is a. Uh, Seizure in the double sense, and even for me, with, you know, it's, it's trying to step away from myself. 
I can read things better than you. I, I'm impressed with these. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, thanks to you. Yeah, that was great. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for this week. If you want to send us some feedback, or if you want to come on the show yourself, email us at gradcastradio at gmail.com. Be sure to hook us up on social media. On Twitter, we're at Gradcast Radio, and look up Gradcast Radio also on Facebook. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, the podcast is located at gradcast.podbean.com, and it's on iTunes. And while you're there, why don't you leave us a review? It really helps us out. We'll see you guys next week.